How is Charlotte Mason MI? That's a great question. I know many of us have heard of the Charlotte Mason method or are using it, but are any of us really 100% Charlotte Mason? Today in this video, I wanna share with you how I incorporate Charlotte Mason's methods and principles in my homeschool. So which parts I use, which parts I sometimes use and are trying to use and working on, and some parts that I just don't do. Hey friends, welcome to Joyful Noise Learning. I'm Ashley, hey there, nice to meet you if we haven't met yet. My name is Ashley, I already said that. Hey, I've been homeschooling my three kids for the last eight years and they are 10, eight, and six currently. So I love to talk about biblically based curriculum, affordable homeschool resources, as well as anything under Charlotte Mason inspired homeschool. So I'm glad you're here. Please consider subscribing and here we go. Let's talk about what we're doing today. Oh. I invited my friend Leilani from Living with Eve. She is wonderful. She's become a really great friend of mine and it's been fun getting to know her and her family. She loves to share on her channel about homeschooling with special needs and she loves looking on the bright side of things and she likes to bring the funny. She's hilarious. You'll, if you want some lightheartedness and some joy in your life, you definitely wanna go check out Leilani's channel. So one thing Leilani and I do have in common is talking about having ADHD. You might see a few squirrels and rabbit trails in our videos, but we also both enjoy the Charlotte Mason homeschooling method. And I'm excited she's gonna share in her video how Charlotte Mason she is. I'm excited to watch her video after this one. So like I said, nobody is 100% Charlotte Mason because Charlotte Mason was living in Victorian era England and she wrote a bunch of books and all of us now, you know, it's several hundred years later and we are interpreting what we read from her. That was also a different time and place, but I really think that her principles and her methods do stand the test of time and we can incorporate them easily into our homeschool today. I don't think that means starting to talk with an English accent, wearing Victorian English attire and making sure our children are writing on slates. I don't think that's, that's what Charlotte Mason method means at all. So what's really cool I think about homeschool today is we can take this and we can adapt it to fit our needs, our styles, and our homeschools. And that's what I think Leilani and I do well and we're really excited to share that with you today. The first thing that I do that I love about the Charlotte Mason homeschool method is, there's lots of things I love, but we'll start with living books. Living Books is one of the core, the core like thing about Charlotte Mason is not just teaching straight from a textbook or just kids memorizing dry facts. And it's not knowledge for the sake of knowledge and passing a test. It's knowledge for the sake of understanding the world and how it works, understanding who our God is and how he has made us and our world. And it's for understanding people and being able to combine these ideas and becoming just a well-rounded, uh, educated individual. So that's why Charlotte Mason is heavy in the living books. I did talk a little bit about this in my Charlotte Mason language arts video, I think, um, where I just give you basics of Charlotte Mason. So what is a living book? Eh, that's kind of hard to describe, but the best way I describe it as is something that tells you a story. It, it's not just facts. Like, it's not like you know, a shark is 800 meters long or the ocean is blue. The sky is pink when it's sunsets. It's not like that. It's like telling you a story. It's pulling you in with the characters, whether they're actual people, real life people and live events or characters in an actual story. So it's rich, good literature written well with great language that tells a good story and it makes you think and it like pulls you in and changes you. You know, it's not just sitting there. It makes you think it changes you. Some Charlotte Mason enthusiasts enjoy reading a Charlotte Mason book list. You can find some of these at Ambleside Online and there's other places, Simply Charlotte Mason. Uh, there's many other places on the internet where you will find these book lists. That is where I'm different. I don't follow every single book that Charlotte Mason would have read, uh, like Our Island Story, um, Trial and Triumph. I don't, there's a bunch out there that I know are on the Ambleside list. And these are what you would consider the classics, like the things that may have been used, you know, 100 years ago. So some of these things we like to look into just a little bit, but I am not hardcore on reading those specific Charlotte Mason older texts. We like to read some modern texts as well that may be still a living book, but not necessarily from England. 
So we try to incorporate a little more diversity into the books we read, um, but I'm still trying to make sure that they're good, rich texts uh, with good, awesome literature. So I'm gonna give that a score of not 100% in living books. I would say maybe 80% for living books. I get the score of 80%. Does that sound good? <laughs> the next one I'm gonna hit on again, I've talked about it before, is nature study. And oh, nature study, so good. My kids love it. We really love it. We have been doing this since the beginning. So instead of doing like a science curriculum, we jumped in with just going outside, looking at nature, <laughs> observing nature, and reading books about nature, stories that were based on, on the animals or the insects or the plants that we were studying. So Charlotte Mason was big on just getting outside and being out there and experiencing God's creation uh, with all your five senses and letting the kids just see and observe and doing what kids do best because kids are made and created to observe and explore and, obs and absorb information through their five senses. So I definitely jumped into that 100% when my kids were little. When it comes to the actual like reading of the guides and the, um, the nature journaling part, we don't do that 100%. We're probably 50% in that really. So I enjoy like all the picture books and stuff. And every once in a while we'll Google something like what um, maybe what leaf of a tree it is or what are the colors is caterpillar, what kind of caterpillar is that. But I don't always carry, carry around the handbook of nature with me when we go on nature study walks. We mo mainly just enjoy being in nature and being outside and, and looking and, and enjoying it. <laughs> and then as far as the journaling, we have had spurts here and there where we do it really well and then other times where we don't do it at all. Um, I have some kids that love it and some that don't. So that's why it's been hard for us. So, but it has been included. We're always out doing nature walks. And it's almost just natural now when we go on a walk, we are looking for those things. We're listening for the birds. We're looking for the types of leaves that we see. Um, we're looking at the rocks and their shapes and their colors. So we do that really naturally now over the last eight years as we've been doing that as a family um, on our nature walks and studies. So for nature study, I'd probably give myself eh, 70%, I think. Charlotte Mason, 70% is what I would say. So we'll say that. Okay, we're going to hit on this one next, the short lessons. Charlotte Mason said, I can't quote it. I'm sorry, guys. But I know she said you need to have short lessons. <laughs> that's, that's the Ashley adapted version of Charlotte Mason. But shorter lessons where you're not, the kids are not bogging down um, on one subject for a long period of time because their attention is going to, they're going to lose attention. So if they're sitting in a lesson for a long period of time and after only five minutes or 10 minutes, they've lost interest. And then that last 50 minutes of the lesson, they're not going to be learning anything. Nothing is absorbing at all. So Charlotte Mason was really big on, you know, s switching different subjects from one at a time and not just sticking to one for hours and hours on end. This one I think we do do really well, mainly because I have an attention problem myself and my attention can only go so far. And the thing is you want to, the kids to learn to give their best and in their attention that they can um, and not try to stretch it too far because then they start slacking basically is what the problem is. So she said, if you can write one letter really well, you start with that. And then next time you ask them to write two letters really well and then eventually they can write a whole sentence and then you know a paragraph. So she says to build on what they have and not to make them do more than they're really capable of. The problem with that is though, that sometimes the kids will complain and whine and they really can do more. And then you're like, oh, you can only do one letter. Eh, that's been a problem in our house for sure. So I am trying to make sure we still have short lessons uh, and then we switch from one subject to the next pretty quickly, but I'm pushing them to do more than I think they know they can do. Not too much, but just a little bit challenge. We're challenging them. So for example, our language arts lessons really only take 10 minutes. Their math is probably a little bit longer, 20 to 30 minutes sometimes, but no longer than that. Science and history readings only take 10 to 15 minutes. So we're just moving from one thing to the next pretty quickly, and we love doing short lessons. So as far as that, I'd say 90%. I would give myself a 90% when it comes to short lessons there. Oh, if you haven't seen my video on how to homeschool preschool, I did a video of, of how to homeschool preschool, but I talk a lot about the Charlotte Mason ways to do the early years in that video. So if you have kids five and under, you'll want to check out that video. It's really good 
for encouraging you to how to start out with these things and incorporating them in preschool. All right, the next thing, which is something I'm very passionate about and excited about is the habits. And Charlotte Mason talked about the habits. Um, she has a whole list. You can get the book from Simply Charlotte Mason, Laying Down the Rails, and it has the whole list of habits in that book. Um, and there's other places to look for it. You can probably Google it and find it. Ambleside Online has a bunch of resources on that too. But I got, I got really excited about this because I was like, oh, that makes sense because oh, there's just so much. I don't know where to start. <laughs> because as you're teaching and growing your kids, you don't start out with them as they would be as an adult. You have to start small and build on each rail basically as they go. You're building on these little habits one at a time every year until eventually they're a grown adult and they can do it all on their own. And I looked at this, this list of habits and I was like, ooh, that's a good idea. So the main ones that I've talked about in other videos before is the habit of obedience. That's a really good one to start with. The habit of diligence. Oh, that's a good one. Uh, the habit of attention. Yeah, habit of attention. Habits of cleanliness, like taking care of yourself and your body, brushing your teeth, getting dressed, taking a shower, or cleaning up after yourself whenever you've done played with toys. We have been working on those since my kids were really little. So again, I have some videos on that that you might want to check out to talk more about that. But that is something that I am passionate about and want my kids to grow in. So as far as habits, I would say with that Charlotte Mason, I would say 95%. I, I, yeah, I don't know. I would say 95% because <laughs> I really like this and we've been working hard on it. I've been seeing the fruit of it now that my kids are a little bit, little bit older. I'm still seeing habits that they are just, they're not good that need to keep growing, but that's the point of, of growth and homeschool and all that. So, okay. And lastly, the one that I thought of was handicrafts. And in Charlotte Mason Method, they recommend they do handicrafts a few times a week in the afternoons. Those are things like needlework, crocheting, which is needlework, <laughs> kind of crocheting, knitting, woodworking, whittling, oh, painting, drawing, art, things like that. I guess art would be in a different topic too, but I'll put it in this one. But this one I found has fit my oldest daughter actually really, really well. She loves all of these things. Anything with, with creating, needleworking with her hands, she has grabbed onto these really well. Um, we don't do it, like she hasn't learned to sew, like she doesn't know how to sew a dress or anything, but she's learned a lot of really, really neat, really, really neat skills. Um, that she's able to make some really awesome things. So I'm so thankful that that has worked well for her. And that has just taken time over time. We've kind of rotated through different skills that she's decided to learn. And I kind of let her take the I let her take the reins on that one. So I said, hey, what are you interested in learning? You know, I can't remember what we started with. What did we start with? Might've been just drawing. I think she started with drawing and we moved to painting and then, um, then probably crocheting was next, origami and then knitting. And then she tried um, felt, felting. She tried that one. Um, there's so much she's tried. 3D pen is another one she likes. She just recently wanted to try whittling. She wanted to uh, carve some things out of wood. So she's just really into that. Uh, my boys aren't as excited about it, but I am trying to give them opportunities to try it just a little bit. I'm not going to force them to knit. I'm not going to force them to learn to sew. Just Not just because they're boys. Let me say <laughs> not just because they're boys, but just because they're not as interested in it. If I had a boy who was interested, I'd say go for it but um, they're just not as interested. Um, they have tried finger knitting. They do like that one. Um, and a little bit of crocheting. Uh, that's still a little bit harder for them in their younger years, but I'm hoping for them to eventually grab onto some more of these handicrafts. There's not really like a set time that we do them. It's a lot of time during their free time we'll do these things or during read aloud for sure. They're perfect for read alouds or at bedtime when we're getting ready for bed and they're and we're reading to them and they'll work on their handicrafts. Again, I don't think I'm 100% sure that Mason in this at all. I don't follow any certain schedule with it, but we do love handicrafts. So I'm gonna say 80% on handicrafts there. So that was pretty high, but not 100% like I was saying. 80% for handicrafts. All right, thank you so much for watching, guys. I have so much more to share about Charlotte Mason Method and how we incorporate it. I know I didn't go into a lot of details here. I would like to do a series on Charlotte Mason basics coming up in these next few months. So give me a thumbs up if you're excited for those videos and I hope you can subscribe and ring the bell so you get a notification 
when those are posted and ready to go. Uh, again, don't forget Leilani's video and check out all my links in the description for anything I mentioned here today. <laughs> you guys rock at homeschooling. Go find his joy among the noise and happy Charlotte Mason homeschooling. And I homeschool my kids, my, I homeschool my three kids ages 10, seven, no. I homeschool my three kids, I've been, ugh. oh my gosh, where's my brain?